Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passing Money. That's Alex and Kirby right here. Today, we're going to continue our series on the five things I wish I, they uh, I knew about making money when I was 20 years old. Uh, today, we're going to talk about um, forgetting about appearances. And this is this is one uh, for me that was that's near and dear to my heart. Alex, Alex know nothing about appearances. He looked he looked like a homeless guy all day, every day. So he's good. But for me, this was one that resonates for me. But Alex, I'll let it go with you first, and then I'll come back to my uh, horror stories of looking at it, thinking appearance meant, meant everything. Excuse me. Um, so, what's what's your thoughts on that? And what do you see? And you know, you know, you're in the younger generation. So, what do you see? What do kids today? Uh, feel about appearances and things like that yeah um i mean i i had to say when i was like 18 19 i always try to look nice like collared shirts and jeans and like i had like uh not dress shoes but nicer shoes but i and i had that appearance going to work hoping like it would help me like maybe move up but then like as i started hold on one second wait hold on one second hold on one second alex you uh, you're a one on one unicorn. Was it <laughs> nobody in 1920 wearing nice shirts and nice shoes, making it look like they was going to work? We was yeah, looking like we was trying to get into the next rap video. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying no. I, I mean, yeah, but I'm not trying to look like the hip hop. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You're you're you I mean, I you know, know what, I know what you're saying, but I just wanted to point out how. Yeah. Uh, the other I'm, other. All right, go ahead. I'm, I'm saying like from then. To like now, how I dress, I just like wear a t shirt and shorts or like sweatpants. Like, I just now nah, I don't care. I just dress with whatever. Yeah, no, no, I'm not saying that you, you was, but what I'm saying is, I, I didn't want to confuse the audience thinking that uh, all the night we thought 19 and 20 year olds was uh, wearing nice shirts and button up shirts and <laughs> looking like they was going to work. You was, you was looking apart for actually work. We were. We was looking apart when I was nineteen twenty, looking like we just came fresh off a rap video. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that that's a whole different story. But go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Do you think? Do you think? Okay. I just wanted to point that out. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, going. I mean, I I still wore this like the same stuff, like going out, I guess. But like, uh, just for me, like uh, you know, and like, I guess that's what I wore. But now I just dress casual. But like seeing other people, um, yeah, I can't understand like the shoes thing, like. I do like like the leather shoes, like the brown leather shoes. I like that, like the the nicer, classy shoes or whatever. But like when people wear like the like Jordans and stuff, I don't get the hype. I really don't. Or like Yeezys. I think Yeezys look nice, but I can't fathom spending like four hundred dollars on shoes. That's just insane. I'd rather buy like a knockoff Chinese version. Um I see it a lot though. I do see it, but not even just with like kids but like with like 30 40 year olds trying to you know their whole they have like a whole outfit matching shoes to shirt to hat like every day and it's kind of funny like when I see people dress like that I'm like wow like I don't know it just it's not my style but I, I see it I see yeah. that yeah but the funny part of it is what they have on is probably worth more than they have in their bank accounts that's the funny thing um and uh, and we're in Florida, but I mean, I live more close to the urban area of Tampa than you do, but you still have your you know pockets where you're at. Um, it's a fake it till you make it culture. But the thing is, they never make it. They just keep faking. They just keep faking. They just keep faking, faking, faking like they have it. They rather they rather have on, you know, uh, a two thousand dollar tennis bracelet. And have twenty dollars in their pocket instead of having on a twenty dollar bracelet with two thousand dollars in their pocket. You know they want to make people think that they're making money, but they're really not. And the one that one that always got me in the military and the military that's it's it's funny. So as you know, the military pay is public record, right? It's no it's no secret. It's no secret. Uh, CEO in the military, you know. This is your rank. This is your pay. You know, you might have a couple little extra add-ons, but not much. A couple hundred dollars here or there. If, you know, you jump out of airplanes or, you know, you get BAH or some 
differential pay or something like that. But it's public record. Literally, if you see somebody's rank on a uniform, you can go online and see how much they make. Plain, cut, and simple. But it's amazing how in the military, everybody know what they make, which is which equals out to about nothing. But everybody would try, everybody would try to one up each other and buy the better car, the better shoes, the bigger house to make it look like, oh, I'm richer than you. No, you we know how much you make. It's no secret. I mean, you see it in the corporate world also, but I I mean it's very funny in the military world. And that was a part of that world, you know. I would buy stuff. To make it look like I had more money than I did. But only thing I had was the military income. I didn't have no side hustles. I didn't have, especially when my time was there, you know, it was it was it was rare that you saw somebody with the side hustle. You might see somebody have a rental property, one or two here or there, or something like that. But nothing that was gonna move the needle to make make people think that I'm an E5, you E5, you got a you got a Mustang 5.0 Roche or whatever those fancy cars is. And I'm driving a Toyota Corolla and, you know, but the image of they always cared about the image to make it look like they made money and government pay is really terrible. But to bring that on, but that's how I was born up in Detroit, where image and style and fashion was everything, you know, every everything. Even now here in Florida, when I see people from Detroit, they move here. The only thing be like, no, I hate Florida. Why is that? Oh, because you can't dress up and go anywhere. And to me, to me now, that's like the best part. I don't have to dress up and I can go anywhere. Like in Detroit, you anywhere after let's say seven o'clock at night, you want to go somewhere. It's dress code. This no gym shoes, no hats, no this, no that, and you you had to dress to the nines just to get in. And that's the part I like about Florida. I could just wear whatever I want to. I mean, I wear this. Funeral, wedding, uh, hey, Alice, let's go out to eat. <laughs> same thing. I, I mean, but and that was something that I had to learn. I was, I was in the same fake it till you make it culture, and I would fake it, fake it, fake it, fake it, like I had it. But I used to be that guy walking around with, uh, you know, expensive shoes on, uh, expensive clothes on, and I probably had two dollars in my pocket. So that is one thing that I wish me at younger when I was twenty that I knew that then because I could have saved a whole bunch of money on all those clothes that I bought. I mean, I had like shoes on top of shoes on top of shoes. So like when I was in basic training, like when we get a pass, I would go to the little mall that they had for military and I would buy like all the shoes. I had so many shoes when I went to airborne school, you only could take like, you know, when you fly on an airplane, you only could take like two suitcases and that's it. But I also had to take my military gear with me there. So I didn't have any room for all the shoes that I bought. So I had to give all the shoes away before I left basic training. Yeah, so, I mean, it was that, but that's how I was. I was just like, oh, I'm buying all these shoes. Oh, I'm getting everything I never had. And then I had to give it all away. And then when I got, you know, further in the military, I was doing it more and more and more. And then, then it finally hit me is stop trying to, stop trying to look uh, like you have it when you really don't. And then now, no, I'm hard pressed. If you see me in some pants, it's uh, it's it's hard times out here. I must say, do laundry or something. If you see me in some pants now, I'm shorts, t-shirt all day, every day. But that that's something that could have saved me a lot of money in my youth. And realized trying to impress all these other people that's broke was a was a futile goal of nothingness. Yeah, I uh, I think like I was. Just like there was a point where I was like, just, I guess, looking at like the appearance of like millionaires, because that thought came across my head of like, you know, if I spend so much money to look good for in front of people or whatever, what does it really mean in the end? You know, I might, I don't know, I might get a promotion at work or whatever, dressing nice. I don't know. Um, But in the end, it was like I saw a lot of millionaires like wearing like joggers tennis shoes t-shirts and i was like well that looks comfortable <laughs> so it was like and it's cheaper it's like 15 bucks for an outfit so i was like i'll just go with this and then cars was like never like a uh big thing for me it was i just looked at a car as like an expense so i do know a couple friends that uh went the military route and they bought like camaros and jaguars yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it is and I, if you look at it, it and then if you look at their pay, it's like, 
six hundred bucks a month, seven hundred bucks a month they was making, and they spending their whole paycheck on a Jaguar or a Camaro. Yeah, I did. I did see that. Uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I don't think I was persuaded by the appearance movement so much. I think I just like wanted to be very very careful with my money. I mean, the thing, the difference between you and my generation was, I mean, and even some other other people that's in your generation that you just weren't paying attention to, like you was dressing the part to get a promotion at work. You know, you were spending your money to look more of the white collar uh, corporate world. Correct. Yeah. The the generation I'm speaking of, and I mean, that's, you know, in, in the corporate world, you have to look the part. You got to you got to look the part for people to even acknowledge you in the corporate world, but they would not I mean, this generation now and appearances and things like that, they don't they're not thinking about the corporate world. They're not they're not going to buy a three piece suit and out your shoes. They ain't buying uh, loafers. They ain't buying cufflinks and stuff like that. They buy nothing that they buy everything that literally you see on. Hip hop video. They they dress it for people that's outside of work. <laughs> they just, they dress it for the you know hot girl summer and all that other stuff. They don't care nothing about the corporate world. They don't care about moving up the ladder. That's why I was saying at the beginning, like you were you a unicorn. Your your goal for even dressing better was different. The different mindset than what the youth is was dressing for, and that's that's what they do. And I mean, you see it. I mean, you see people at work. Uh, you know, they got on new pair of shoes, a new pair of gym shoes every day. You know, they got the they got the gold, they got the silver, they got the diamonds on. Like they, you know, they making a million dollars, but they're really not. They struggling to pay their bills like the next person, but they want to impress somebody else that's outside of that realm of the tower of you know the corporate world. You know, you trying to move up the ladder, they trying to slide into some DMs, you know what I mean? That's the that was the different the different mindsets on uh mm -hmm. what's going on. And then of course maybe I mean it has to be working because they keep doing it. Maybe they you know it works to get a you know guy's number, girl's number, and then then the person that they with, you know, realize that they broke and then they leave them. And then and then they, they want to say the other person's a gold digger. But that's the reason you was you was flashing your gold to get them. So now now they realize you really didn't have it. So who's wrong in it? Yeah, I think like looking at like my like managers too, because they wore like nice watches and shoes and stuff like that. That's probably what like I was like, maybe I should dress like that to get a promotion. But then I remember like I saw the founder and owner of Rooms to Go uh, come by and he had like a striped collared shirt and some khakis. And I was like, look at this dude wearing like a $30 outfit <laughs> worth billions. You know, it's like that was it. it. And uh, yeah, that, even that's the, it the the president of uh our distribution company he uh just wears a collared shirt and some pants it's like nothing fancy or nothing just straightforward so yeah, and and i mean that that's that's all it is and then with that it gives you you know more and it gives you more time you don't when you when your wardrobe is not extensive you just throw on something and get to work I mean, I mean, not to work like going to a corporate job. I mean, but getting to work, focusing on growing your income. You have more income to grow your income with. But when you sit here spending all your money on all these clothes, it ain't, you probably don't know this, Alex, but in the, you know, the 20, the 20 year old realm, once you wear an outfit out, you can't wear it again for like six months. <laughs> you know, if you wear it again, oh no, I wore that two weeks ago. They, somebody might see me in that. They can't. So they spend all this money on something that they can wear like once or twice a year. So just think of how many outfits you got to buy to go out so people won't repeat seeing you again to impress people. And then you're spending all your money on that. You know how much you know how much brain waves I would have to use if I thought about what somebody see me in? Hell, I might wear the same shirt like 50 videos straight. I don't, I don't care. And I hope somebody be like, oh, well, he wearing that same shirt from last week. So what? Uh, I, yeah, don't. <laughs> I didn't know people paid attention to that till like a couple weeks ago. I've got these two black collared shirts. They're like plain shirts, but they're different. But they look, if you just glance at them, you'll think they're the same. And so I wore mm -hmm. one one day and the next day I wore the other. So I was like, didn't you wear that yesterday? I was like, no, it's a different shirt. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, but yeah. like I wear like the same thing. Like I'm not, like completely mindless to what I'm wearing. And that's and that's what they're doing. So just think of how much brainwave got to go into. Oh, well, I'm going here. Did this person see me? Did that person see me? I can't wear that. I got to wear this. You know how all that energy could be focused into growing something bigger, but they worried about what everybody else think and where they see them in. That's a crazy world we live in. And But that right there is a reason why a lot of people in their 20s and 30s waste their 20s and 30s away uh, spending money that they don't have or spending a little money that they have and not growing because they worried about everybody else. And that's what stopped them. And next thing you know, when they get 35 and 40, you'd be like, oh, well, I got to start working on my finances. This is, you should have been working on that 20 years ago. And then now they look up, they 30, 40, 50. And then now they ain't got nothing set up for retirement, nothing to, you know, get them through retirement. Now, then next thing you know, they 80 years old sitting here, checking out uh, receipts at Costco's and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with the people that's doing that, but that is the byproduct of it. Most people don't have the money. That's why they're working. People don't work just for the fun of it. Because <laughs> it's, it's a byproduct of them not doing what they needed to do when they were younger. But we done ran along with this one. So Alex, you want to close it out? Yeah, guys, with all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment, let us know how you dress, share this video, uh, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.